Good day, guys and girls. Would you believe me if I told you that it took over two months to get this Mach-E fixed? Or what if I said that I had two EVs in the shop for the same exact issue at the same exact time? What if I said that a popular content creator or journalist would get the same exact issue fixed within two days? Well, if you are a Ford Mustang Mach-E or F-150 EV owner, buckle up because this is going to be a long and wild journey, so stay tuned. and girls have you just received this svs light or service vehicle soon light that says electrical powertrain fault or powertrain malfunction reduced power well, stick around i'll show you how to diagnose this and what the actual fix is going to be in the end so stay tuned and stick around so happy tuesday guys and girls yesterday was uh family day or i think president's day and as you can see, we've got this warning light on in my Mach-E now, and I'm concerned that uh, I'm doing damage to the vehicle. I don't know if I've ever had one with the little um, exclamation mark in the middle. When I got to work here, which is 40 miles or 60 kilometers from my house, uh, it said that it was a electrical system drain fault and my vehicle might shut off unexpectedly. So uh, we've had this vehicle for about two years now, haven't had any issues, uh, just scheduled maintenance, but uh, I'm concerned mostly that I'm doing damage and uh, you know that it'll brick and I won't be able to get home. So uh, hopefully that's not the case. It's been pretty rock solid before. I got the warning about a uh, third, maybe even halfway into my drive, so I was kind of stuck. Just hoping that everything's gonna be okay, but we'll let you know. So like I just said, uh, I got to work and I got the notice that I had the electrical powertrain fault on the service vehicle soon light, and it was also powertrain malfunction and reduced power. I actually didn't notice any reduced power while I was driving to or from work. And again, that distance is 60 kilometers each way. Uh, 120 kilometers total, which I think is around 75 miles, something like that. Had no issues getting to or from work. Uh, when I got to work, I checked my Ford app, the Ford Pass app, and basically it just said, stop your vehicle as soon as possible, shift to park, switch your vehicle off, and attempt to restart it. If the fault remains, contact your authorized dealer as soon as possible. So I did that. And then what I did is I also went out at lunchtime and I put it on the charger at work. I charged it up to, I think it got up to 81%. I thought maybe there would have been uh, something to do with the 12 volt battery that was also uh, adding into the mix. So it charged up the 12 volt battery, it charged up to 81% in the high uh, voltage battery and still was getting the fault, turned it off, went out at the end of the day to drive home. Again, this little warning is still down there and brought it home, went out the next day just to see if anything had cleared overnight. I put it on the charger, I charged it up to 95% which I usually don't do again it was still showing this service vehicle soon light and so after that next morning with the light still being on I called Ford and uh, they were able to get me in two days later uh, which is actually tomorrow so it goes in first thing tomorrow morning just from the little bit of research that I was doing uh, the first thing they're going to look at, I guess, is whether it's the uh, shift knob, if there's some kind of 
uh, issue or damage to the shift knob, I guess that can throw things off. But it seems like the most common issue is this HVBJB or the high voltage battery junction box that is likely the issue. And there was a recall at some point for these HVBJBs, but mine was not included in that. So hopefully, first of all, hopefully that's not the issue. Uh, but second of all, if it is the issue that Ford has the parts available and we won't be down for a long period of time. Again, this vehicle, as you can see, has almost 41,000 kilometers. We bought it last June, and sorry, the previous June, and uh, we're coming up on March right now. So, I mean, we're looking at, you know, just shy of two years. I'm trying to do the math in my head, March, April, May, June. So we're three months shy of two years with this vehicle and it's been rock solid aside from a couple of little little hiccups. So yeah, haven't had to get take it in for any major service, haven't had to do brake work, haven't had to do oil changes that you would do with like a conventional ICE vehicle. So it's been really good. It's just these little issues that just irk me. But I mean, we took this thing 2,200 kilometers on a trip from Ontario, Canada, in through New York State, Pennsylvania, back through New York State, and then home. So I mean, what else could you really ask for? You know, a couple little hiccups, it's not so bad, but hopefully everything is okay. So stick around for the journey. I'm gonna show you what was involved, what the actual fix was in the end, and hopefully there's maybe something that can be done to avoid this, and if there is, I'm gonna let you know. So stick around, we'll see what happens when we get the vehicle back. Hey guys and girls, so it is a couple of weeks later, about three weeks later in fact, and as you can see, we're in the blue car now, R2-D2, and I've got the same warning pop up in the bottom, but I didn't really, didn't receive the message saying powertrain fault or uh, powertrain malfunction, electrical malfunction, something like that. Um, as you remember, the red one went in for service, and that's why we've got this Bronco from the dealership uh, while well, they figure out what's going on with the red one with Darth Maul. I don't have time to be dealing with this. I sincerely hope that because not a lot of messages came up that everything is good and all I need to do is cycle the car on and off a couple of times and everything will be okay. So we're gonna fingers crossed try that here and see what happens. Nope, and it says service vehicle soon. And we'll try doing it one more time. I can't believe this is happening at the same time, both vehicles. This is, this is insane actually. Unbelievable. I don't know what to do, but um, what really irritates me the most about that whole thing is this came on because I had to pass someone that was doing, I, I'm being generous when I said that they're doing 70 in an 80 kilometer zone. There was, I don't know how many people behind them. It was just insane. And that's how this all originated. So because somebody can't, pay attention and drive uh, the speed limit. I realize it's not a target to uh, be getting to, but when you have that much traffic behind you, um, yeah, it, you're doing something wrong. We didn't catch up to that person by doing 100 over the speed limit. We caught up because they were impeding traffic, which is a chargeable offense under the Highway Traffic Act in Ontario, Canada. So, Really, if they hadn't have done that, everything would have been good. And yeah, here we are. So it's unfortunate. I only have 33,000 kilometers on this. We're dealing with the same problem with, the, with both vehicles at the same time. So stay tuned. I will keep you guys and girls posted on what the outcome was and all that.
so stay tuned so guys and girls it is saturday the 15th we are here at oak ridge ford we are dropping off r2d2 because of the electrical system fail uh the whatever the warnings were they were getting i'm just i'm so burnt out and frustrated right now we're actually dropping off this vehicle just to give an update on dm the red one that we brought in with the same issue uh it's been three weeks now and apparently ford has the parts in the warehouse sitting there uh they didn't ship them out then they did said that they shipped them and then now i guess they're sitting down uh in detroit waiting to cross the border and the dealership doesn't know why they're not releasing the parts so just a little note on Oak Ridge Ford. All I can do is kind of compare it to Grogan Ford where I bought these vehicles. Grogan Ford literally dropped everything they did to get something done for me. Kitchener Ford didn't even hesitate. It's like, here's, go pick up a rental car and you don't even have to pick up the rental car in Kitchener. You can pick it up in London, Ontario. Um, here, uh, there has been no promise of a loaner vehicle or a rental vehicle we've talked to some staff i'm going to save my comments to the end um just at at first glance and first uh feel first appearance it just i'm not getting the same level of service that i was with the other ones i don't like to bad mouth or slander so i will elaborate that later if it is true and uh you guys and girls can make your own decision from there but as of today, we are dropping off our second Mach-E for the same exact problem. And I am very, very frustrated. I will say that these vehicles have been fairly maintenance free, no oil changes, no fluids, no nothing. But uh, for a vehicle that's only a year and a half old or coming up on a year and a half old, uh, it's very frustrating. Wasn't expecting perfection for something so new, but here we are. Good day, guys and girls. Today is April 20th, 2024, and if you've been following along on the channel, you'll know that this blue vehicle and my red Mach-E had the drivetrain fault at the same exact time. And what that means is that the high voltage battery box needs to be replaced. Luckily, this one here was replaced in a week. Now, the red one went in on February 21st, 2024, so we are one day shy of two months and luckily enough Oak Ridge Ford has given us this Bronco that we can use but we've been using their vehicle for two months and we've been making payments on that red vehicle for two months I want to ask Ford what is going on yes I understand the part needs to match my VIN but I just read an article in Motor Trend Motor Trend had a long-term test fleet and one of them was the Ford F-150 Lightning Ford bent over backwards to fix their problem give them a Mach-E and get them on the road Good morning, guys and girls. Today is April 28th, 2024. Apologize, we got to do the video kind of facing this way because it's going to rain any second now. Uh, it's a very, very good day, glorious day for me because look at that. Darth Maul is finally back. So if you've been following along with the channel, we took Darth Maul in for the high voltage battery junction box replacement on February 21st, 2024. So two months and a week is what it's taken uh, to get this fixed up. So that means over that time, we've spent some $2,600 in car payments, made four car payments to be exact. Apologize for the traffic driving by, but uh, we finally got him back with a clean bill of health. We'll show you what's involved with that uh, replacement there and what was charged. It was free of charge from Ford uh, to get this done. Now, R2-D2, the blue one, took about two weeks. And the rationale that we got from the dealer, which is totally believable and I have no doubt is true, 
is that the part in that high voltage battery junction box has to match the VIN number of the vehicle. For anyone who's gone into Ford to try to buy even a windshield wiper, let alone something like spark plugs, will know that it has to match the VIN number. And I've dealt with this with the Flex. And even though it was a 2010 Ford Flex and they had made it for some 13 years and the spark plugs were all the same that I was dealing with, they wanted to know the exact vehicle that it was going on and had a part number specific to it, even though it, in the box, all the spark plugs were the same. That's my little rant. That's apparently why it took over two months to get this fixed. Now, it's an involved process. You've actually got to drop the battery from the vehicle, put it onto a little cradle, and actually get to the junction box that's on top of that. So it's quite an involved process. I'm sure that it's done that way for a reason, but the part was literally apparently sitting in LA, got shipped up to Detroit and was stuck at the border for some two months. And that's pretty disheartening when you go ahead and read the Motor Trend Car of the Year issue. And in their long-term fleet, they've got an F-150 Lightning that got called in for a recall, quote unquote. And they literally got the recall notice, took it in, Ford gave them a Mach-E that they could drive around, not a Bronco like what we had. And they had it fixed within a few days. So I hope that I don't have the information mixed up there and that I'm not missing something. But I really hope that Ford isn't treating their premium customers or their customers that have a, a real strong voice and are very public different than the average Joe or Jill like you and I. So again, that's just my little rant on that. So we finally got them both back now. It really is amazing that we had both have the exact same issue at the exact same time and we were down a vehicle. I mentioned that I was dealing with that Bronco. I appreciate Oak Ridge Ford lending us the Bronco because uh, they didn't have to. And I really hope that Oak Ridge Ford is back charging Ford for that. Really, Ford should have been making my car payments for that entire time, the four car payments that we made without having a vehicle, but I'm happy that I at least had something to drive around. So I hope this helps you guys and girls with troubleshooting some of the issues that you might have. Just be aware that if you take the vehicle in, depending on the age of them, these are 2022s. This one was built in January of 22, the red one. And this one was built, I think, about eight months later, maybe 10 months later. Uh, so if you've got one of the earlier 2022 produced models, you might have a time. If you live in the States, it's probably easier. I live in Canada and maybe that had something to do with it too. But again, this one here, about two weeks. This one here, over two months, same year. Same vehicles, same everything. Long range, all wheel drive, just very, very frustrating. I know that, you know, the first one through the wall gets bloody, meaning like this is new technology. This is brand new technology for Ford. I wasn't looking for perfection, but I'm not looking for two months down. Well, we're making full payments on it. Now, some people have asked and made comment too. We have EVs because I drive 60 kilometers each way to work. So 120 kilometers, my wife, she's driving, I think about 90 kilometers each way now. So we're not doing this to save the environment. We're doing this to save our pocketbook. If we can make a positive change towards the environment in the meantime, perfect. But my bottom line is the dollar, not the earth. If you wanna see more Mach-E content like this, please like and subscribe. We're adding content like this all the time. If you're looking at putting on winter tires, rear grills, putting in a dash cam, we're gonna have some videos coming up on larger windshield wipers for the rear window. Do cabin filters make a difference? We're gonna try the K&N air filter. 
stick around for that too. Hit that notification bell so you know when the new content's been put up. I firmly believe that with a little bit of information, maybe a special tool here and there, that anyone, anyone is capable of everything that I have on this channel. I promise you, you have more in you than you could possibly believe. Because you never know unless you bear. We'll see you on the next video.